The Bermuda Triangle is often seen as one of the world's biggest mysteries. That mystery goes even further. At SeaWorld Orlando, for just a few short years, their first ever ride changed the park forever. Yet today is nearly completely forgotten. In 1973, SeaWorld Orlando opened, just two years after the Magic Kingdom down the road, making the area more than just a town with a theme park, but a vacation destination. As the third SeaWorld park to open in the country, it kept a similar formula, focusing on animal exhibits and entertainment shows. It remained this way for nearly two decades, and it wouldn't be until Busch Gardens owner Anheuser-Busch purchased the park for $1.1 billion that things would start to change. Busch's SeaWorld was ready to add its first real ride just two years after the purchase. During the first two decades of SeaWorld, Orlando had changed, with more Disney parks opening, or planned to open, and another competitor in Universal that offered high-tech experiences just down the road. To compete, the animal park would have to adapt. Luckily, the new owner had experience and success building thrill rides, and there was one type of ride popping up throughout the country that had seen a huge success. What started with Star Tours in 1987 was quickly becoming a staple of theme parks and amusement parks around the country, and in 1992, it will be SeaWorld's turn. Disney had Star Wars, Universal had Back to the Future, Warner Brothers had Batman, and Anheuser-Busch had experience already with simulator rides. So, they stuck to what they knew. At the company's Williamsburg Park, Questor launched in 1990, opening also in Tampa in 1991. Both rides were extremely popular and offered something different for those not wanting to ride the more thrilling roller coaster rides in each park. In late 1991, it was announced that a flight simulator type ride would be coming to SeaWorld. 1992 would be planned to be the biggest expansion year in the park's history, with Shamu's Happy Harbor a hospitality center, and the brand new thrilling attraction. The multi-million dollar ride would use a flight simulator experience to take guests under the ocean on a scientific investigation of one of the sea's most famous secrets. When asked why it was building a simulator ride, the park answered with, simulators are the theme park ride of the 1990s and have eclipsed roller coasters in popularity. It was hoped that by adding an attraction, it would make SeaWorld a more aggressive competitor against Disney and Universal nearby. As for the theme, the 440,000 square mile area of ocean that had caused debate for years, with hundreds of disappearing ships, planes, and storms hovering over it unlike any others, would be perfect. The Bermuda Triangle was seen by many as one of the world's greatest mysteries, spanning legend and beyond the perfect mystery for this theme park attraction. With SeaWorld ready to bring a trip to the Bermuda Triangle to life, the new ride was announced in May 1992. SeaWorld Orlando's first ever ride will be called Mission Bermuda Triangle. This is the Bermuda Triangle presents challenges that fire the imagination. SeaWorld's Mission Bermuda Triangle presents a spine-tingling experience that takes you down one mile to the bottom of the sea. Both are filled with secrets and surprises, but neither can answer the questions that have troubled mankind for hundreds of years. The ride's film would use very similar techniques to Questor, as the same company who made that film would be working on this, with an aim to create a realistic underwater adventure. The California-based Midland Productions Company, who was formed in 1989, would be behind the project of this new film. 
Midlands began as a small studio for advertising and small feature films, whose owner, Don Fox, previously worked under special effects director Doug Trumbull, who would also work on another simulator ride, the one down the road. The company's early work included special effects commercials between their first amusement park ride, Questor. It would be a crew of 15 designers, model makers, and cameramen who would focus on SeaWorld's new ride. Tampa-based Reflectone, manufacturer of flight simulators and training devices for the military, would create the ride vehicle and systems, and again, they were the same company that had done this for Questor. Midland Productions stated that they created something that was believable, heading into the Bermuda Triangle with a touch of imagination, something entertaining and educational. The premise for this expedition would be to transport marine enthusiasts you on a scientific dive to observe and document undersea life in the Bermuda Triangle. The ride itself would use that flight simulator motion technology, very similar to what had been used on Star Tours, here with three ride vehicles named the Neptune, Barracuda, and Shipjack, aiming for 1,800 passengers per hour. Before boarding, ABC News anchor Hugh Downs provided the history of the Triangle as you waited to board one of these three vessels each able to hold 59 people. The pre-show explains the mission you're about to take, and that hopefully it should be a smooth one. The dive begins with guests able to feel the vehicle being lifted by a crane from the base ship and released into the water. As the waves wash over the viewport, the screen at the front of the ride, the submarine slowly sinks below the surface. The ride vehicle gently sways back and forth to give the sensation of heading underwater. The ride took guests over coral reefs, complete with close encounters with fish. The scenes shown were real and not CGI, using state-of-the-art underwater filming techniques. The serenity of the trip is soon interrupted by news that a sister submarine has made an incredible discovery and you had to dive into the triangle to investigate. On the way to find it, the ship's sonar beeps like crazy as you encountered a large shark and humpback whales. The whale's tail actually accidentally hits your vessel and it rocks violently around. Bubbles surround the ship as it speeds up, getting deeper and deeper, and eventually you would see the missing shipwreck of the USS Cyclops, the very same one that you had heard about during the ride's pre-show. Lured by the discovery, the captain commands the submarine to descend deeper and deeper into the darkness of the trench, a mile below the surface. An undersea earthquake stirs up the water and knocks the ship around. The team driving the ship shouts, you are all going to die. Luckily, they do not. The simulator was quite rough at this point as the Cyclops tips over the edge of the trench and pulls you in. Alarms ring out through your vehicle and lights flash that air is escaping from your vehicle. It really was kind of traumatic, especially if you didn't like being underwater. Luckily, you launch up back towards the surface and the engines kick in. And you make it back to safety. After a speedy recovery, your ride is over. They can't explain what happened down there. You would just have to chalk it up to another mystery within the Bermuda Triangle. The experience was hectic, short at just four minutes, but actually quite thrilling and rough for those on board. To create these special effects, producer Yash Takata and his team drew from special effects techniques known as dry for wet. The stages for the film would be dry, but it would be the team's job to make them appear wet. To do this, they mostly just used tons and tons of smoke covered in blue light. Motion control, a method of using a computer program to move the movement of a camera and the objects with the frames of the film, created a fluid and slowed underwater feeling motion. The captain of this vessel would be voiced by Robert Stack. The in-studio film was then intercut with real underwater photography to complete the effect and tricking the audience into believing that they were floating underwater during the four-minute film. Combined with the capable nine feet of movement in any direction of the cabin's hydraulics, they hope to create an authentic experience. When SeaWorld created Mission Bermuda Triangle, we wanted you to experience firsthand the mystery and the intrigue behind countless inexplicable disappearances. We wanted you to feel the same kind of excitement as those who entered the Triangle, only to never return. But there was one thing we didn't count on. It's not very good for repeat visits.
Mission Bermuda Triangle opened at SeaWorld Orlando on Memorial Day weekend 1992. The ride was short, but those riding it said it gave an exciting experience and the film made it feel like you were really underwater. Though, even from day one, it was very rough and jerky. That though, at the time, was somewhat what made motion simulators exciting. After the ride was over, you exited directly into the gift shop. For those wanting to understand how the ride worked, a small window would show the exposed hoses and hydraulics of the cabins to get a closer look at the experience in the gift shop. The ride remained extremely popular, with the largest weights in the park reaching up to 45 minutes. I'm inside the Barracuda, one of Mission Bermuda Triangle's deep sea submersibles. This is where you'll sit as you embark on a remarkably realistic journey to the depths of the Bermuda Triangle. As you experience Mission Bermuda Triangle, you'll be bombarded with information that will make you believe you're actually diving to the bottom of the ocean. SeaWorld built this attraction so that you can live the mystery, feel the intrigue, experience the thrill, have a good time, and live to tell about it. SeaWorld Orlando officially had its very first thrill ride, and it wouldn't be long until the other SeaWorld parks followed. In 1994, the San Diego park would get Mission Bermuda Triangle, with an identical experience to the original, except with one extra ride vehicle to increase the capacity. You step into the cabin, doors close behind you. You're instructed to fasten your seatbelt. Suddenly, you feel as if you've been dropped into the sea, and you find yourself descending deeper and deeper. The effect upon the mind and body is extraordinary. The very same year, it was reported that the original Mission Bermuda Triangle ride in Orlando may be closing. The report stated that the simulator ride would be scrapped, and the park would soon announce it. This report was later said to be a mistake, and its future remained unknown. Mission Bermuda Triangle quietly closed and disappeared, but only after its closure around a month passed before it was replaced. That new replacement come in would take the area to the next level, a ride where you could travel to the North Pole for an adventure through frozen territory. Using the exact same ride system as before, this new planned cornerstone of the park would be the highlight edition for 1995. You're soaring into the teeth of the Arctic. You're frozen in awe. You're down at Base Station Wild Arctic, where you step off your flight and into the adventure of a lifetime, exploring firsthand a world that gives new meaning to the word wildlife. Wild Arctic. Only SeaWorld can take you there. SeaWorld's second thrill ride would very much be the same as its often forgotten first, though this time it would introduce what would become a staple of the park's attractions for decades. The ride would include an animal exhibit linked to it. Not only would guests visit the North Pole, but get to see the real animals that live there. Construction on the additional animal exhibits began in 1994, while the original ride was still open. After the month's closure, 1995 saw the reimagined attraction Wild Arctic open. The only real change was a few updates to the theme in and the ride film shown on board, an update to the pre-show, and the addition of the animal exhibits. The new film would be created by the same team as the original. When asked if the replacement came because it was unpopular, the park stated no. It was successful, but you want to bring new experiences. Plus, they didn't want to have two simulator rides at the park. Wild Arctic was a little less thrilling than the original film, though obviously the flight to the base station does not go as planned. SeaWorld San Diego's Mission Bermuda Triangle would be replaced by Wild Arctic as well in 1997, opening on May 10th, leaving Mission Bermuda Triangle just a forgotten attraction from the park. The mystery gets a little bit stranger, however. After both rides have been closed for years and replaced, Mission Bermuda Triangle would return as a brand new attraction using the same film at SeaWorld Cleveland, their first ever ride experience, and the park's biggest ever investment, an eight-year-old ride. Using four new simulators, the original SeaWorld ride was back, becoming the only ride added under SeaWorld's ownership of that park. It was short-lived and lasted about the same amount of time as the original versions, remaining as the park turned into Six Flags Worlds of Adventure and closing in 2003. That story, though, is for a different expedition. 
Wild Arctic remained for 25 years at SeaWorld Orlando. It was closed in San Diego in January 2020 and replaced with Arctic Rescue. When SeaWorld Orlando reopened after the pandemic in June 2020, Wild Arctic just remained closed. The animal exhibit reopened and the original gift shop, which was now the only way into the exhibit, but the ride could not be accessed and without any love disappeared from the park's lineup following in the footsteps of the first version and just quietly disappeared. Something that seems to happen at SeaWorld Orlando. What lies ahead for the former Wild Arctic building, which currently sits half abandoned? Who really knows? Any fin is possible. Let's hope it's something good that will hook people back in. If you have any suggestions for what it could be, let me know in the comments. Mission Bermuda Triangle is often forgotten when thinking about the former attractions at SeaWorld Orlando, though its importance can't really be understated. As SeaWorld's first ever ride attraction, it changed the direction of the park forever. Though short-lived, it is remembered fondly by those who got to experience it, and its replacement became a staple of the park for years. However, you may think something fishy is afoot. Two rides in the same building, one originally themed around the mysterious Bermuda Triangle, has basically disappeared. I'm not saying the building is cursed, but you have to start thinking, hmm. I guess really, it just could not get more on theme than that. As of now, what sits inside the buildings remain unused. The queue and maintenance areas became a howler scream house, yet the ride vehicle areas remain unused and are just as much of a mystery as the Bermuda Triangle itself. SeaWorld's first ever thrill ride has basically been forgotten. It doesn't really matter how you feel about the Bermuda Triangle because this attraction takes you on a fascinating journey whether you believe the region's lore or not. Mission Bermuda Triangle provides a perfect complement for SeaWorld's other attractions. The folks here never intended to solve all the mysteries of the Bermuda Triangle. Rather, they wanted to fill you with intrigue and leave you wondering about this bizarre mystery. Now you can dive into this wonderful mystery at SeaWorld's new Mission Bermuda Triangle. So come on in for a test dive before it disappears. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Expedition Extinct. If you enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe to join the expedition. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram for updates on upcoming videos. And a special thank you to our Patreons for supporting the channel. We will see you next time.